Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at the PSP 285 and I want to talk a little bit about some cool things you can do to side trance bass lines to just add some really cool fills into your already dope bass line. So I already have this bass line. Um, let's go ahead, let's just mix this off. So right now it's 100% dry. This is what the input sounds like. And I purposely put reverb on there because you can do some cool stuff with the verb. But this might not remain on. So for example, this is the input patch if you're curious. And if I take this off, you know, that would be the input. And there's a lot of really cool variations. I'll dive into the input in a little bit, but I really want to focus on what you could do with the, the 85. Um, there is, or the 285, I guess I should say, there is a delay modulation ability that opens the door to some really cool sort of almost... They, they sound, sounds like uh, it's collapsing in on itself and then opening back up. So let me just, let me just play it for you. That right there, that's pretty cool. And there's different versions you could do with this. And this is mostly responsible to, because of the verb, uh, the verb really brings it out. Um, if we go ahead and change the attack and release relationship. You get some very different rhythms by messing with the sensitivity, speed, and this relationship all at the same time. See right there, there like you get this boom, 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 boom. Just cool things that you could pick out and use as loops or even try to work in in real time with what you're doing. Um, I think the most obvious application is bringing forward these, these two controls so that they're very tight and bringing the attack way down. That gives the, uh, the cleanest result, I think. I should also note there are a ton of other variations on this idea that you can use. So I have over here a bunch of other versions where I mangle it in a bunch of different ways. Um, and it sounds really cool. And you could of course clean this up so like this is maybe a little too crazy. Maybe you just want this crazy section right here. And maybe we don't want all this other stuff. So th these were just shapes that I was experimenting with. Uh, there's a lot of cool shapes you could go with. Let's say that I just want these sections that have a wave-like pattern on them. Maybe we think that's too much. You know, you can come in and, and tame it how you like. I think this loop right here actually works pretty well. And away you go, you can pick some cool things. Also, the filter type used in here is of massive importance. It's on a notch filter. This is huge. If I change it to a low pass, the resonance is gonna just move all around in crazy ways. Yeah, you get some super different results. And at that point, now these controls vary this as well, and it's gonna be really big. This, the modulations actually for this top guy is moving the filter, which essentially moves around where the resonance is allowed to sit. If we bring down the sensitivity though, and let's, let's actually bring back all those extra pieces. You just get you just get crazy options i'm not going to dive into this it is such a like just craziness uh, we're going to focus mostly on mastering what exactly this down here does that's the end goal uh for what we're doing here so let's dive into the input patch now the input patch has quite a bit going on and let's change this back to a notch filter uh so input patch the input patch is a harmer um it is a pretty common technique i like to use it's got a unison on it the unison has two voices, and on those two voices, there is a very low pitch difference, and the phase is what makes it so unique. So because the panning is zero, the two voices have to phase collide with each other. They don't have any room in the stereo spectrum to like differentiate themselves at all. 
So what ends up happening is just straight up phasing. And we can move them and change them quite dramatically with the, just this control. So you can see some pretty big variations for like almost no knob movement at all. So this is something to keep your eye on when we're looking at this. Now, it didn't start out this way. There's a verb on, so let's turn that off. There's compression on, let's turn that off. And there's a distortion. So the, the guts of the patch is just this. Yeah, not, not very exciting, right? And if I move this around, you'll hear like little differences, but nothing gnarly. Like zero. Um, so what the heck's going on here? Well, there's a couple things at play. First, there's an envelope going on on the filter, which is just a low pass. And it does this. So it's just turning off over time. And Harmer, they're called articulators. And then there is a volume envelope right here. And it sounds like this. And it's very, very short. This is important. Uh, there's things I could do here to try and make this sound a lot snappier and cleaner. But this is good enough for government work here. So with those two things out of the way, that's the main components. Now it's time to sort of jazz it up a little bit. I already have the unison on. Uh, the next thing we're going to go for is under compression, we're going to just turn this on to heating. This is going to pump the lows and the highs to make it just a little bit snappier. And this also does a big volume move. So you just got to kind of be aware of that, but that's going on there. And now we're going to go ahead and bring in the distortion. Now I chose classic because I just wanted some more high frequency stuff. This will do it. Without this, we can make it sort of as dull or bright as we want. So I just left it at 100%. And then finally, there's the reverb. This is a, something you may bring on and off during different parts of your track because it might be a little too much at times. But the reverb really lends itself well to those whoop, 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 whoop kind of sounds because now there's a lot of high end to play with. So anyways, that's the input patch. Let's dive over to the 285. With this, let's make sure the, yep, the other one's bypassed, so we're good there. Okay, so input right now, um, a lot going on. The first thing we want to do is I am not going to use the LFO at all for the modulation. So let's just set it over to envelope. This will tell it to use the envelope. We're going to have the envelope get triggered by the input. I can't remember what I used to trigger before, but let's just hope it was the input. Um, now for this, since we're only using the envelope, this is fine. And this should all be fine here. Let's set this to a notch filter just so that we're clear, even when the drive is off, which I'm just gonna turn off because we're not gonna use it, um, these settings still matter. So just be aware of that. Now let's come over here to this area. This is probably where you would start, um, but I already know like the filter type is gonna make a big difference because if you have a low pass running around, the resonance is gonna do completely different things. So let's take a look here at the filter. Let's bring it down quite a bit, but this range is gonna be hard to work with. So we're gonna change the range. Oh, no, this range is exactly what we want. If you're at the range of 5,000 mouse movements, um, and by the way, I always wanna click on these and drag, but uh, you click here to drag, you're like sliders. This, this is gonna be a little too much. So uh, we're gonna leave it at 500 and we're gonna bring it down. I settled on 58 or thereabouts. Um, this, this can matter when the feedback is very high. So if you're doing like something with a high feedback, let me show you with the other one real quick since it's all set up. If you bring the feedback up, uh, you basically can make like whole bass lines. Yeah, you can do some really cool stuff. Be sure to set the feedback back to negative infinity or if you hit panic, it'll actually do that for you. Most DAWs too, if you hit stop, it'll also kill the, the feedback setting here. And that, that also kills it. Uh, but just so you know, yeah, if you're gonna do this, but there's some really cool sound design options there. You gotta be a little more clever with your automation so that during the track, things turn off when you want them to. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to show you while I was here, and that is if we have the filter one on, but the resonance down, you get a cool variation because of this gate. Versus if it was on. Down. You get volume.
volume changes because it's playing around with this gate here. Uh, but yeah, and if we set this to the middle, I think it's a little more apparent. Versus this one, the verb sort of sits through the whole way. And again, you might want to get rid of the verb and just to show you without the verb. You hear how the wah 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 is way less obvious? really hard to hear actually. That's the variation with the mod. But now you can see sort of why I chose to put verb on. Um, it's, it's important as part of the input. You need some high end to play with. So again, let's turn this off and look over here. So with that, we're going to choose this. Now what this does is it sets a range for us to sort of mess with here. Now there's a manual multiplier here. Um, I'm going to set it to 0.5 for now. We'll see what this does here in a second. And let's go ahead and uh, let's play this. So you can sort of hear what it does. Now, interesting, it's why it's moving that we get interesting results, I think. Otherwise, it's just a static thing. And you can have this, um, well, this is the delay mod. So this is linked to the envelope stuff over here, right? This generates an envelope based on the input, and then this is gonna modulate that according to the modulation depth we give it. If we vary this though, while this is going on, we can get weird effects. Um, the manual over here sort of affects, um, it just acts as a multiplier to this. There are times where this is going to have a big impact and times where this is almost not gonna matter at all. So you can hear the envelope sort of triggering and trying to do things. And that's also why it's important that we have a very crisp, clean, like pluck sound coming in. The verb can also potentially mess with this so that we might go with the verb another way. But in this case, I chose to just use it as part of the input because it's important for our effect. Um, but it can cause issues with envelope if you have too much sustain. But anyways, I'm going to leave this just at 0.5. We're going to take this though. And this is the thing we really want to automate. So we're going to go to browse parameters. We're going to move this and we're going to automate it. Now, this control here is going to move that around and big movements of an up and down motion are going to do big things. So let's do that. Now, this right here is not actually single line curves like I'm drawing. Um, what I actually did was if you right click, you can go to wave and you can set up a wave. So let's just set something small, set it up here. And I have another point that is making it do this sort of straight shape here, like you're seeing. And that's pretty much how I did that shape. Um, so let's go right here. And let's have this repeat every four. Whoops, I want these, thank you. Now I have this up here. This, I don't have a ton of like, there's not like a, a thing that I'm like, oh, it's gonna sound like this or that. I don't have a magic like card to do that. Um, instead, I just, I just try things out. If it sounds different, then great. I'm messing with the delay mod, the delay mod in particular setting is gonna sound a certain way. This is setting it static, but this is the variation. And there's like this complex relationship with the envelope moving. Man, I ain't got an idea what kind of shape this is going to put out. I just think the notion of doing it is is cool. So that's why I chose to mess with this. If you're wondering, like, how do you even come up with this stuff? I was like, that might be kind of weird. And that's it. Because <laughs> I can't even guess the output. Like, it's crazy. But it should be repeatable because this is the same every time. And the input, depending on how I set up this envelope, should be reset by the time the next one hits. I think that's pretty cool. That's what's coming on here. The This low to high causes that yip sound. So that's pretty dope. Uh, so while we're here, um, we could try messing with this a little more, see what kind of things we can get out. You'll notice with a very short time, you'll get more phasey flanger kinds, type of stuff.
If you go for 50 milliseconds, it becomes like 1.5 and you can really fine tune this, but I found 500 to be uh, more creatively interesting. So I found somewhere around there 58, 60 milliseconds. I suppose you could also calculate something from like the tempo, but uh, yeah, I thought that sounded pretty cool. And we've pretty much got that sound. Um, but from here, we have this sensitivity and speed, which sort of relate how much the, it basically relates how much the envelope's allowed to do and how quickly the envelope turns on and off. And this is the attack and release of the envelope, but in like a single knob. So a lot of these things are just kind of like, you just got to use your ears and know kind of what they're touching. So this is going to affect how quickly the envelope moves. So these faster movements may get more or less accentuated. Sensitivity was also going to kind of be like that. So let's just see if we can find a sweet spot. So this particular setting here, I have a feeling the, this may make a difference. Let's try it. So when you hear stuff slowing down and these sort of middle things, that's where this tends to tends to shine a little bit. But just saying, so you no, know, I wanted to stop there because just auditorily, I was like, oh yeah, this this might be a spot where this will matter more. But at that point, we pretty much have the sound. Now, if we leave the world of Notch, which is just like a hole in the spectrum that moves around and go to something like a low pass, this is gonna have a peak now that like runs around in the spectrum. Bunch of things are happening. Um, I am choosing where this goes. This is essentially choosing where that peak is going to sit. And then the modulation is how much this modulation that's coming out of this middle unit is going to affect it, which is right here. So right now, I find that usually the sweet spots in this first two little bits. And then uh, down here, this just sets the resonance, and then this affects how much the resonance is allowed to modulate via this thing as well. So we could actually have this off and the resonance high, and it should still move around like a crazy thing. It just might be a little much to have on all the time. So you might have this off and then have it get triggered on by the resonance uh, by some amount of depth from this envelope. And then what could be kind of a cool effect is to bring this modulation on and off because if it's off, this filter is so low that it's not really going to let very much through and we're mixed half and half. So we'll still have our core sound coming through. So if we were to move this and automate it, um, let's come up with a cool thing. We could get some likewise, some pretty crazy effects. Let's say here at the end, we want to do some weird stuff with the modulation. Maybe we add on a wave and we give it a high frequency. Yeah, and then maybe we want this to go back to being low. Um, and then let's set this to a smooth curve. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, okay. I think I have an idea now. I don't know why, if someone wants to explain why this variation happens, but I think we could just open the filter up at the end here with the um, modulation. And now the modulation just should just push this up. So then it should just be open. Yeah. So the, very strange. Uh, you learn things every day. I'm, that's going to be a question I have trying to get answered later. Um, let's go for a wave again. Let's add another one right here because why not? And let's just do like a small one like or a slow one, I should say. 
oh, look, and it triggers there too. Oh, this is so weird. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what causes this variation. And we could have this be a reoccurring thing that just goes throughout. Anyways, you have options. That's the whole point. <laughs> it could take a long time to get something sometimes. Sometimes you stumble across something quickly, uh, but you come across some cool things, but you get the general idea. This shape and controlling this is what creates the whooshing sound that you were, that I showed at the beginning. But there's a lot of additional things you can sort of consider. Like we could also try changing the attack and release ratio. <laughs> And that can have a big impact, you know, versus something that sounds like this. So um, if we were to come in here, let's just look at this first bit. And let's delete this movement. Let's also make it 100% wet. I adjusted the filter here to be open so that it's not doing things. But this is again why you might pick a notch filter, which would create a cool resonance movement instead of, you know, this madness with the high pass, low pass type stuff. But that could be something that's very interesting to you and you might want to try out in the track because the resonance bits can be pretty cool in a bass line. Yeah, so cool textures, like that little, like, just crinkly sound. Anyways, that is how you make some of these, these cool things going on. So the original was this, but, you know, you can get a lot of variations. It's just a matter of just fine-tuning things. But these are the two main things that are controlled. And from there, you can get all kinds of resonancy stuff. It's really just a matter of fine-tuning it to exactly what you're trying to accomplish. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.